Hello everyone, welcome to the presentation of our paper entitled An Examination of the Work Practice of Crop Farms. So the general background of our study is that there are more and more large and complex macro tasks on the crowdsourcing market. Crowdsourcing platforms then start to support crowd workers functioning in teams. In China, there is a similar type of thought workforce. There are companies farming workouts in the crowdsourcing context, and we call them crowd farms. However, little do we know about their work practice. So, we conducted semi-structured telephone interviews with 53 participants from Zhubajie platform, and we asked questions revolving around five aspects, as you may tell from the page. Here is a table summarizing all of our findings in the study. However, due to the time limitation, I would like to just mention some of the interesting findings. For example, different from the previous studies, which mainly focus on the macro task, we found that macro tasks, such as logo and slogan creation, are also important for this professional core farm. For the most part, they use these tasks to fill the perfect vacuum between macro tasks and some of them would also use the smaller task to train their new employees so that they can participate in larger and more complex core work in the future. If you are interested in this topic, please check out our paper for more information. In the discussion section, we first talk about every specific findings in terms of the task procurements, execution, and reputation management in crowd farms. Again, you are very welcome to check them out in the paper. After that, we discussed more in depth regarding the impact that crowd farm have on solo crowd workers, requesters, and crowdsourcing platform. So, for solo crowd workers, the participation of crowd farm is more like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, crowd farms could rely on their advantages in teamwork and professionalism to take on as many tasks as possible, which leaves solo crowd workers at a, dis at a disadvantage with the competition from specialized companies. On the other hand, the subcontracted tasks from crowd farm provide solo crowd workers with opportunities to take part in more advanced macro tasks. With the different skills and experience obtained in this process, they could better develop their careers in crowd work. For requesters, crowd farm is an efficient and professional one-stop option, so the requester do not have to decompo decompose the work by themselves or communicate with multiple solo crowd workers which significantly increase the work efficiency and save lots of time. However, a risk for requester is that the subcontracting behavior of crowd farm may lead to unknown third party performing their tasks, increasing uncertainty about the quality of the final submission. For platforms, crowd farm provides the opportunity to expand macro task crowdsourcing which will attract more enterprises and individuals to post a wider variety of tasks and therefore increase the revenue of this platform. But it should also be noted that the emergency of crowd farms challenges the operation and management of the crowdsourcing platform. For example, an obvious challenge is that how could the platform manage the secondary market in which crowd farm at least partially control the price of the subcontracted task. To sum up, our study is the most detailed examination of crowd farm to date with several design implications derived from novel findings. Also, we would like to suggest some further questions for future study. For example, will today's relatively small crowd farms grow and focus entirely on online work? Will they adopt more practices of traditional organizations? Will they be affected by the shift to more remote business interaction that some anticipate as a result of COVID-19? And thank you.